Ivan from the EV Stock Channel here, and today I'll be exploring the next potential breakthrough in battery technology and how Seal and Nanotechnologies could be a key player in making this happen. As always, all content in this video is our opinion only, and we do not recommend buying or selling any financial instruments. Now, before I jump into Scylla Nanotechnologies, let me show you how I came across this company. I came across an interesting question that was asked during the 2018 shareholder meeting, in which someone asked Elon Musk when he expects that Tesla would be able to pack twice as much energy into a battery without increasing the size or weight, to which Elon replied, Twice as much is tricky, but we can certainly see a path to about a 30% improvement, maybe a 40% improvement in energy in the same size battery pack. That's technology we are confident does work, and it just it needs to be scaled up and made very reliable. But 30 to 40% is definitely doable. Long term, probably double. Long term by other people's standards. From a Tesla standpoint, we think probably two to three years to get to about a 30% improvement in volumetric energy density, and um, yeah, maybe six years or something, six to eight years to get to a doubling. For, for that really big jump, a lithium anode is, is the key. Uh, just play it plating out pure lithium on the anode. So let's unpack what we just heard here. So first of all, Elon states that within two to three years, we can expect a 30 to 40% volumetric energy increase. And what was happening at the time Elon made this statement in June of 2018? Tesla was in the early process of acquiring Maxwell Technologies. So the pieces seem to come together really well as to where the 30 to 40 percent increase will come from that he was referring to. The other thing that Elon mentioned was to get to a 100 percent volumetric increase. A lithium anode is the key. So let's look into lithium anodes. The first thing I found when I started researching this topic was an awesome video on Sean Mitchell's channel in which Sean interviewed PhD scholar Ravindra Kempaya, in which Ravindra talked about how lithium anodes can increase the energy density of a battery cell, but also come with the problem of dendrite formation, which is the formation of sharp spiky structures that grow within the battery and puncture the cell, making them unusable. Now, I've got to say, if you have any interest in battery technology, then I would highly, highly recommend checking out the whole video as they cover everything from raw materials, the manufacturing process and recycling of batteries. So if you want to learn more, I'll leave the link below in the description. But in summary, lithium anodes seem possible as long as you can find a way to stop dendrite formation. So I continued my research and came across a paper titled Plating Dendrite Free Lithium Anode with a Polymer Ceramic Polymer Sandwich Electrolyte that was published in July of 2018 from the University of Texas Austin, which coincidentally was the same time that Elon mentioned that lithium plated anodes are the key. And while the paper goes over my head in terms of technical content, look at whose name is on the paper, John Goodenough, one of three winners of the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for discovering the lithium ion battery cell. Now, interestingly enough, this starts to overlap with some of the research that Galileo Russell from Hyperchange has done, but more on that later on. So I kept on researching and trying to find out what corporations are in the process of commercializing the lithium anode, but couldn't find anything of significance. But interestingly enough, silicon anodes kept coming up time and time again. So I focused my research there to see what I could find. So here we go, silicon anodes. But before I go into the details, let's briefly look at the structure of the battery cell. We have the positive cathode and the negative anode. The cathode in a Tesla battery cell is made up of nickel, aluminum and cobalt, while the anode is made up of graphite, and graphite is made up of carbon, with its atoms arranged in hexagonal structures. Now, the reason why silicon anodes are being researched and developed is because silicon can bond with 25 times more lithium ions than graphite, which means the energy density can be substantially increased. However, the downside is that as silicon bonds with lithium ions, its volume can expand up to fourfold and then shrink again once letting go of the lithium ions. And as this high stress process is repeated, the batteries are subjected to high degradation. So this is the engineering challenge that companies and researchers are trying to solve in order to make silicon anodes a viable alternative to graphite anodes. Anyways, so I kept on digging and found three main companies working on this type of technology, which were Innovate, Enovix, and Scylla Nanotechnologies. The first company, Innovate, interestingly enough, have John Goodenough as part of the advisory board. 
which is worth mentioning. As for Enovix, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary, but then I looked into Scylla Nanotechnologies. On the front page of the website, they mentioned the key for mass market electric vehicles is the cost per kilowatt hour needs to come down. And the best way to do this is to make cells with higher energy density. Okay, that all sounds good. So I went to see who their management was. And the first thing that jumped out to me was the founder and CEO was Gene Berdachevsky. Who is he? Employee number seven at Tesla who worked on building the early battery pack prototypes for the Roadster. I also heard that when he applied for the job at Tesla, he offered to work for free and sweep the floors just to show how eager he was to work there. Then I scroll through the other members of the executive team and I come across Kurt Kelty. Who is he, you may ask? Well, he worked with JB Straubel and led the battery cell team at Tesla for more than a decade. So what else do we know about Scylla Nanotechnologies? Well, it's reported that they have found a way of producing rigid silicon nanoparticles which allow significant volume changes in the battery without causing degradation, which was a key hurdle to making this technology work. So Scylla nanotechnologies definitely have the Tesla connection and appear to be on track to developing silicon-based anodes that may be of interest to many different automakers. I have also read that they're working with BMW and Daimler, but are they working with Tesla? Who knows? And this makes me think, that Tesla would know very well what Scylla is up to. And if Tesla is not interested in their technology, then I could only assume that Tesla is working on something even better. Either that, or they're following Scylla nanotechnology's progress closely. So in summary, Elon mentions that the key to getting a 100% increase in energy density would be dependent on lithium anodes. We find out that a team at the University of Texas Austin looks to have made solid progress in making this possible, but we don't know what's happening with the technology currently. While there are companies that are working on silicon anodes such as Evernate, Enovix, and of course, Scylla Nanotechnologies that have a strong Tesla connection through Gene Berdachevsky and Kurt Kelty. Now, there is one obvious aspect that I haven't covered in this video, and that is the cathode side to the battery. But I'll tell you who has, Galileo Russell from Hyperchange. And if you haven't seen his two videos on this very topic, be sure to check them out. There's some phenomenally awesome research there on next generation batteries, and I'll leave the links in the description below. So that's all for this episode, but I hope my research into the battery field has shed some light on some areas that may not have been very well known. And I think it's really awesome that there are other people like Galileo Russell, Sean Mitchell, and several others that take the time to research these important topics and present them in a way so we can all learn more and make the process of following Tesla and the EV revolution that much more enjoyable when you get to understand what's going on from many different levels. So a big thank you to the Patreons who support the channel and a huge shout out to Brian and Stuart. So until next time, I'll see you guys soon.